My name is Hannah Mullen, and we're so happy that you all are here joining us today. And I'm joined here uh, with um, Edwin Pereira um, of Comcast Business. So thanks, Edwin, for joining us today as well. Um, so I'm Hannah Mullen, as I said, I'm with the Oregon Department of Transportation, and I work on um, the Get There program and the Get There Challenge with a great team of folks. Um, Oregon's annual Get There Challenge is happening right now until Sunday, October 18th. And if you live or work in Oregon, there's still time to sign up. Um, right up until October 18th, you can sharpen your remote work skills, um, stay active, get recognized, and win lots of great prizes. Um, and our presenter today is Edwin Pereira. Edwin is a 25-year Comcast business technician, and in just a little, he's going to share some simple tips we can all use to op help optimize our Wi-Fi. And at the end of this Zoomcast, I'll be sharing a link that you can use to unlock the Join the Live Zoomcast achievement for the Get There Challenge and earn some points to win. This Zoomcast is being recorded, so um, just know that uh, we'll be recording this and sharing it online for future watchers as well. So with that, we all know that this year has been unlike any other. Um, we've all had to adjust to spending more time at home and working from home. And by this point, we've all gained lots of new skills when it comes to how we get work done. The question now for us all is how can we continue improving remote work, and for some of us, how do we continue successfully working remotely in the longer term? The benefits of working from home are really clear too. By removing the draining commute from our daily lives, we have more flexibility and time, we can reduce pollution and traffic, and we can be more productive while saving money and stress. So that's why we're really excited to have Edwin with us today to talk about how we can make the experience of working from home even better. Getting the strongest Wi-Fi signal in your home is so important right now. Um, so as you have, as we're talking, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them in the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom page. Um, I'll be reading these to Edwin during our Q&A session, and Edwin can help answer your questions as our expert. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Edwin and take it away. Good morning, everybody. My name is Edwin. I'm with Xfinity and I'm here today to talk to you about Wi-Fi. And uh, let's start with a couple key notes, uh, router and gateway placement uh, is one of the key things we want to talk about today, where not to place your router um, and, and uh, things around the router that would interfere with its Wi-Fi signal. Um, we're also going to talk about shared bandwidth uh, with Internet of Things and uh, devices within your home, whether they're laptops, iPhones, um, iPads, any device that would connect to your home network via Wi-Fi. Um, we're also going to uh, highlight a little bit uh, about how to go about updating your devices uh, online uh, so that you can have the best experience possible whenever connecting to any Wi-Fi connected device. Um, we're also going to talk about when uh, ever possible hardwiring devices to your modem gateway or router um, and then uh, the use of Wi-Fi extenders. So let me talk a little bit about gateway and router placement. So um, if you're extending a customer, you're used to seeing uh, gateways such as these in your homes. This one has four port ethernet switches on the back. This one comes with two ports. This is an XB6 and this is the new XB7. Um, and gateways are a modem. So you have a modem, standalone modem, and a router, which is a Wi-Fi router as such as this one here. Um, and these two are sandwiched together and create what's called a gateway. So a gateway is both those devices in one. Um, I would recommend uh, placement of your gateway modem or router in an open area uh, away from uh, things such as uh, mirrors, concrete, brick, um, anything with high density, and uh, to keep it away uh, from electronic devices such as uh, 
2.4 gigahertz cell phone, or excuse me, not cell phones, but cordless phones, um, microwaves, refrigerators, anything that, that uh, could possibly interfere with that Wi-Fi signal. And then as far as uh, shared bandwidth and other things, we'll, I think we're going to touch points a little bit about uh, how to limit uh, bandwidth uh, on such devices and uh, talk about things that you can do within, within your network to help uh, alleviate uh, high bandwidth use, uses from any of the things that would help you with uh, re working remotely from home. And with that, I'll, I'm going to pass it back to Hannah. Thanks, Edwin. All right, so we've got some questions coming in. Um, our first question is, what can cause Wi-Fi interference that you might not think would? Um, so Wi-Fi interference can be caused by lots of different things within a home. One being the physical barriers, such as, you know, what what is the makeup of your home? Is it built out of, you know, two by four and wood, like most homes um, that are newer? Uh, or, it, or are you living in an older home that has uh, brick and concrete? You've got fireplaces, um, lather plaster. Sometimes the lather plaster may have uh, uh, lap boards behind it, or it actually has mesh behind it. Um, things such as uh, 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 frequency interference on your Wi-Fi. So things like microwaves, and we, I discussed a little earlier, the cordless phones, um, and, and also uh, neighboring uh, Wi-Fi networks. If you don't, if you don't really think about it, if you live in a single-family home, you probably have got one wireless router, and you know if you've got a bigger home, maybe a couple extenders or some other access points in the home. Um, those those will help create a better experience within the home. But what we don't think about is our neighbors. What are they doing on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz? bands that are interfering with your home. Uh, I'll give you an example. The 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, I want you to think about it, there's 11 channels that we can use in the US. So think about that as a, an 11 lane highway, right? Anybody can drive on the highway and anybody can use it as they see fit. The problem is that in, it, it, let, let's say those 11 lanes are 20 megahertz wide, okay? you can go into a, an access point or a router and you can change it to a 40 megahertz wide channel. And that can inherently affect your speed in, in your home if your neighbor does such things, right? So you have to kind of know how to log in, look at these things and, and get, get them fixed. But those are some things that can interfere, you know, with your Wi-Fi signal. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is here. Okay, question. Um, our gateway is next to our TV. Is that okay? Gateways, uh, you know, we prefer, I, I would prefer that a gateway be placed at least two to three feet away from any TV. Definitely don't place them behind a TV because the TV itself, uh, most, you know, most older TVs, they'll, they'll have like a metal backing. The newer ones have have a, a plastic backing, but the screen itself can interfere with that rebroadcast or that launch point of the antenna. So if you think about a gateway, you know, the antennas are built around this, this top piece. So as the signal radiates out, if the TV's in front of it, even my hand in front of it can affect that wireless signal. So you wanna put it in a place that, that, you know, where it's got a clear line of sight and it's centrally central located in your home where you're gonna get the best possible you know, Wi-Fi signal. Um, that that being said, um, the, the other thing you want to be concerned about when placing the, the gateway is that it's, again, it's not next to, you know, a cordless phone base station. It's not next to a microwave in a kitchen. It's not next to a refrigerator, a fish tank, anything that has high density. Oftentimes, you know, I'll, I'll go into a home or, or even a business and, you know, the, the modem or the gateway is in a, you know, if it's a business, it's in an IT room closet and it's locked away, right? And if the antenna's not, you know, doesn't have a lot of far reach. In a home, most customers, you know, if it's in an office, like, oh, let's put it on this bookshelf. But then it's surrounded by books and a lot of density. 
So, you know, you want to kind of put it out in an open area. All right. Um, next question, is there any issue placing a router upstairs or downstairs? I would say the, you know, as a, as a best practice policy, I would place it uh, downstairs because the signal launches and leaves, again, leaves the antenna array and goes throughout the home. The, the signal goes out and up. It doesn't, it doesn't go, you know, vertical straight across and then, and then out. So you, you want to make sure that you're, you, if you're, if you have a three story home, I would put it in the middle floor. If you have a two story home, I'd place it in, you know, on the bottom floor centrally located. Um, oftentimes when, when I, when I go to a home and there's an issue, uh, and the chief complaint is Wi-Fi signal or a dead spot, it's because the gateway is in the opposite corner of where the office is, uh, or, you know, I, I put the gateway in, you know, in my, uh, entertainment center hub area in the living room, but my office is clear on the other side of the house. And then you've got walls, fireplaces, you know, anything with high density that, that, that interferes with that signal. Okay, thank you so much. Next question, what is the best way to test and troubleshoot Wi-Fi issues? There, well, there's a lot of <laughs> big question. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's kind of a big question, but there's a lot of neat tools that, that are out there that you can use. Um, I will show you here on on my iPhone very quickly. There's a, the airport admin utility and you can do, download it on Android. And up here in the upper right hand corner, it says Wi Fi scan. So I can press that button and I can hit scan and I will wait and in about you know five ten seconds, you can already start seeing them appear. I have a list of the access points of where I'm located and their signal strength and what channel they're broadcasting on. So, as as a consumer in a home or even in a business, you can use this app fairly easily to help you understand and see how how strong your signal is. Now, understand that these signals uh, are in the negative, so it'd be like say negative fifty. The closer you get to 100, the worse your signal is. So if I'm at a home and I have a, um, you might hear me say client. When I say client, um, I, I'm referring to an iPhone, an iPad, and a laptop, anything that can connect to a wireless access point. Um, but when, you, when you're going through and troubleshooting, you know, if you're, you know, this is a great app because what you can do is, you can say, hey, I'm in my office and, you know, I'm dropping Zoom calls or, I, you know, I've got really poor Wi-Fi and, you know, I've got one or two bars and I, I really don't know how to how to improve it. You can use this app to, one, start it up in, in your office, see what the signal level is, and then you can go to wherever your gateway or router is and you can, okay, let's, let's relocate this. Let's see what happens if I move it closer. What if I give it a better line of sight towards that room? or that dead spot, do I get better signal, right? So it, it's an app that can clearly help you do that. Now, one thing I'll, I'll warn you on is when you download the app, it's free on the, in, the, in the app store or, or the Google store. When you download the app, you'll have to go under settings and under settings, you'll go to the app and let me see if I can show you this fairly quickly. You'll go to the app and down at the bottom, it's gonna say right here, it's gonna say Wi-Fi scanner. You wanna make sure that you turn that on so that when you launch the app, the Wi-Fi scan feature is enabled within the app. If that makes and sense. real quick, what's the name of the app again? Airport Admin Utility. Say it one more time. <laughs> Airport Admin Utility. Airport Admin Utility. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then you know things things to think about when when uh, uh, you're troubleshooting, right? Um, is you know. Wi-Fi, it's shared between everything in the home. So uh, I'll give you a true life example. I bought a Ring Elite door camera for my home and it's hardwired, it doesn't use Wi-Fi. Um, and it is just what an example. Um, and my wife and I both work from home. We have two kids that are doing homeschooling as well. And my wife was complaining about her Zoom calls dropping and video call quality. And the outcome was that the Zoom camera Every time there was motion or an Amazon driver delivered something to the front door, the camera was using about 75% of the upload 
bandwidth to upload that video to the cloud so that we could view it later. So, you know, you know, things like that, you want to, you want to keep in mind that inner things will cause problems like that. So what I ended up doing is going in and creating a, a, a bandwidth limit and or in my case, a user group and limiting how much upload that that device could actually use on the network. So just a couple tips and tricks of, you know, how to troubleshoot Wi-Fi. Um, the other thing I would suggest is with the Wi-Fi scanner um, in the app, it's gonna tell you what channels are being used by what access points. The airport admin utility is kind of, you know, it, it's kind of an entry level app where, where it'll give you, you know, some quick insight as to what, what's happening. Um, I use an app called uh, Insider or I-N-S-S-I-D-E-R, Insider or N-S-S-I-D, or it depends on how you wanna pronounce it. Um, and when you launch the app and you can find, you know, it's free to download online. You can, if you find a, I would suggest you find and search for a downloadable one that's got less malware in it. But once you launch the app within it, it's gonna show you both the 2.4 gigahertz band and the five gigahertz bands. And it's gonna show you all the access points that are broadcasting within your home or business, right? And what channels are being utilized. So I'll give you an example, say, there, you're, you're at your business and you're in a business park and there's, you know, eight units. Well, if all eight units have Wi-Fi and they're all transmitting on channel one, channel one, my, my co-channel interference and my interference and my Wi-Fi from the other access points is a lot greater than if I'm scanning and, and I look in the app and say, oh, well, look, channel 11 is free. There's nothing, there's nobody broadcasting up there. I can just log into my router, change the channel to channel 11, and then the experience, you know, my link score is going to go from, say, you know, 40 to 100, per, you know, 100 on the link score. And my uh, uh, all over experience is going to be a lot greater and better, you know, than if you were still on channel one. All right. We've got another question coming in. What kind of Wi-Fi extender should I look to get and where is the best place to put them? Well, and Wi-Fi extenders, I'm maybe sure. Maybe a quick, yeah, recap of what a Wi-Fi extender is, too, while we're at it. Yeah, so Wi-Fi extenders, um, they're, they're, they're a great tool. Um, we at Xfinity, we use pods, right? These little, these little, you know, pods that you can plug directly into a wall and use, and, and they work great. Um, but if you're going to, if you're not an Xfinity customer and, and you know, you're, you're going to go out shopping, right? If you get, if you Google or get on Amazon or Best Buy, it, the list is just enormous of all these different options that you can buy out there. What I can tell you about Wi-Fi extenders is um, you can get them uh, that are, dual, most of them are dual band, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. There are extenders out there that use um, one of those bands as its backhaul, meaning if my iPhone is connected to the 5 gigahertz band, the extender will use the 2.4 band as its backhaul or its connection to your router or gateway to transmit. So if I'm on my phone and I say, hey, I wanna to go to Facebook, it will use the 2.4 band to get the information from the main router, send it to the extender, and then the extender rebroadcasts that out. Um, and those, those do work, um, but they create a little more latency. The best overall extenders that are out there on the market are those that have a dedicated radio for their backhaul meaning they don't, they, they're both a dual band, but they have a separate radio that communicates between the router and the extender. Um, and they're, they're quicker, they're more efficient, and they just, they'll give you an overall better experience. Um, one, one thing that, that, that tends to happen, say on a Zoom call, if you're connected to the five gigahertz band, you're on a Zoom call and your laptop says, hey, there's too much interference on the five gigahertz, I'm gonna drop down to the 2.4, if the extender is connected via the 2.4 and you're on the extender, you're going to drop calls, right? Because it's 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 going to switch over and then it's going to say, oh, now I need to use the 5 gigahertz as my backhaul and give the client the 2.4. So um, extenders, there's there's many of them out there. Um, just from experience, I, I've dealt with uh, Amplify's extenders. Um, if you're a home user, um, they're great. They're very intuitive and they're easy to install and use. But um, we at Comcast, you know, like I said, we have the pods, 
Um, another thing you might try if you're trying to, to get out and an extender uh, won't work because you have very poor Wi-Fi or you can't get through a wall or there's too much density or brick is um, there are things such as these. They're called uh, power line units. Um, this is an eight gear product. Um, there's tons of other companies that make them out there. But what those do is they utilize the electrical wiring in the home. As long as you have one electrical panel, so you know if you in your home you go and you've got one breaker panel and there's not a sub panel, most of the time they, they, they work. And what they do is you plug one end in to an electrical outlet, you go to your modem router gateway and you'll plug an ethernet cable from the modem or into the power line unit. And then it'll utilize the electrical wiring in the home to send uh, more of a traditional hardwired connection over to wherever you place the other end unit. And then the other end unit, you could hardwire to your laptop, to another access point, to another router, uh, a switch, um, and it gives you more of a hardwired connection. The only thing is, again, it's not as, it's not as fast as having a hardwired connection. And then while we're touching on hardwired connections right now, um, I just want everybody to know that um, in general, it, it's, it's recommended that if you're gonna be streaming, if you're gonna be doing video conferencing, Zoom calls, anything like that, that you actually hardwire your connection. You don't rely on, on Wi-Fi unless you really have a really robust like enterprise grade network in your home or office. Um, it's really recommended that you hardwire, um, meaning that, you know, via Wi-Fi, you, you, there's so many variables that can affect a Wi-Fi signal, even during a call. Like right now, I'm, I'm hardwired, but if, and I'm in an office, but if, if, you know, give you an example, if I wasn't hardwired and somebody walked by, you know, with a cordless phone or somebody turned on a microwave, all those things can affect this, you know, my call you know, during that session. So if you're on a call that's utterly of the most importance, it is recommended that you actually hardwire that device that you're gonna use, you know, every day to do, to do your work, right? Thank you. I learned something new today as well. <laughs> um, what are Wi-Fi boosters? Wi-Fi boosters, um, well, Wi -Fi, a Wi-Fi booster is the same thing as a range extender. All, and, here, and here's what happens is, you know, I'll, I'll go into homes and a customer will say, I, well, I bought a booster, I bought an extender, and look, on my device, I have, you know, I have three bars, I have full Wi-Fi, but my internet is slow. And again, we'll, we'll go back to the placement of the gateway and then the placement of, of the booster or extender, just because you have full Wi-Fi bars on your device, doesn't mean that the connection between the booster or extender and the gateway are good. You need to, you need to make sure that when you're building or adding an extender, I would not place it any more than 20 or 25 feet away from the main access point or, or rather the, you know, the, the gateway that, that you're using. Um, and then make sure that when you place it, you have good clear line of sight and if you don't have those tools and you're, you're not very familiar, you know, to, to keep it in the most simplest terms, if, if you're just looking for speed, you know, you could pair the extender or booster, move it and install it in the place you want it to be. And then you could go uh, download a, a, a speed test app, like Ookla has one for iPhone and Android. You could do that and just run a, just a, a very basic speed test. And, you know, that would help you because you could say, well, when I placed it, you know, in the hallway, the booster, and I'm in my office, I'm getting, you know, like five meg, you know, down. And my upload is, you know, two and a half meg. But when I move the booster back, you know, six feet closer to the gateway, now my download's 20 and my upload is 10, right? So you kind of have to play with it to get it, you know, just the right spot. And the difficult part is every home is different. Every, every house is built differently. Uh, it's makeup is differently and the way that Wi-Fi is going to behave is differently. You know, we, we talked earlier one of the, uh, about, you know, barriers, you know, physical barriers. Mirrors is a big thing in a home. Piping, electrical, refrigerators, those all tend to interfere. So the best way, you know, with a booster or extender is, you know, placement. Where do you place it? How you place it? And then testing. 
And just keep in mind that if it worked today and, you know, three months down the road, it's not working, there's, there's, you know, you have to go back and start testing again. Why isn't it working? What changed in, in my, uh, you know, in, in within my home to make it not work? Did I add anything? Did I change anything, right? So things of that nature. Great, and I think we've got about time for maybe one or two more questions. So our next question is, how much do extenders cost? Extenders cost? Um, it depends on it depends on the type of extender that you buy. Um, you can get ex extenders, you know, well below a hundred dollar price point, and I've seen extenders that go well above, you know, the three hundred dollar price point. Um, but it it just depends on what what the outcome you want. And I, I understand most people are, are, you know, most homeowners and businesses are like, I want the fastest Wi-Fi in the world, right? But that comes at a premium. You you, you know you you need to do things like um, you need to write down you know how many uh, how many devices are going to connect to the Wi-Fi, how many devices are going to be clustered in a in a given room or area, right? And then the access point or the extender that I'm putting in can it handle that capacity or load? And then you have to go out and kind of do some research and and buy the access point that's going to meet the needs of you know, the end user, right? What am I going to use that extender for? Do I want it for gaming? If you're going to be gaming, I would not recommend that you use an extender. You hardwire and go direct to the source. All right, and our final question here is, when is it time to get a new router or gateway? I would say every three to four years, you should be, you should be buying uh, a new router or gateway. Um, and when you have, you know, and when you have problems too, you, you also need to look at uh, with the, this day and age, technology is, is, is advancing so fast, right? Um, the new iPhone, they just announced yesterday, it's going to come out. And I'm sure I'm going to get some trouble calls about, hey, I bought the new iPhone and it's not fast and it's not working. Well, the new, the new iPhone is going to have the Wi-Fi 6, you know, capability and that's that's the newest greatest technology is Wi-Fi 6. Just because your device has that capability, it doesn't mean that your router does. And that's when you need to update. And and if you do have both of those devices that are Wi-Fi 6 capable or, or your technology matches or is you know on on par with each other, the other things you need to be looking at is updating your software, your drivers. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a customer uh, about three weeks ago. They complained that their brand new um, uh, uh, Microsoft laptop stopped working and wouldn't get online and their printer wouldn't get online. Well, the customer said, well, I am going to these websites and I am trying to update the drivers. Just so happened that on the Microsoft laptop, he was going to the Microsoft website and it said, the driver you're currently using is the best one, but in the in the in the window, it tells you the make and model of the device. His was an Intel wireless card. So I said, we go to the manufacturer's website. We went to the manufacturer's website, downloaded the newest driver hardwired to that computer for that device, updated it, and then the the laptop connected and he was happy. You know, and the same thing for the printer. We ended up going to the printer's website and updated it as well. I Sorry. lost you there. I was on mute there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely need an update for my router. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, so I just shared my screen. Hope you all can see it. Um, but uh, I want to thank Edwin so much for joining us today. And I also want to thank Comcast Business for sponsoring the Get There Challenge this year. Um, if you have any more questions on Wi-Fi or the Get There Challenge, um, please uh, reach out to us at info at gettheroregon.org. It's showing on the screen right now. And finally, to earn points for the Get There Challenge, um, you can open up your camera app on your smartphone if you have one and um, hold it up to this QR code here on the screen. That should pull up a URL for you. Alternatively, you can type in the URL at the bottom um, underneath the QR code, and that should also pull up the 
uh, link to claim some points for the Get There Challenge. So I'll leave this up just for a minute or so. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Edwin, and taking the time to share these really valuable tips with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, and this recording will be available on our website. Um, we'll also email it out and share it on our social media. So if you did um, need to catch this QR code again or want to review any of the tips that we shared today, um, please uh, check out that recording. Um, you can find it at gettheroregon.org and by clicking log into the Get There tool. Thank you so much. Bye.